Hi, everyone, and welcome to Poster 2988 for the ASH 2023 meeting. My name is Keenan Harder, seen right here. I'm the corresponding author on this titled Cooperative Network Between MIC and XPO Associated with Degreased T-Cell Presence and Depleted Tumor Microenvironment May Be Addressed by the Synergistic Combination of AZD4573 and Selenexor. So take a quick look over here at the intro. Basic idea, DLBCL, still the most commonly diagnosed blood cancer, 90,000 per year in this case. We're looking and doing quite well. Our CHOP does great at frontline, but if you fail our CHOP, you're looking at a very dismal outlook. That was until the advent of CAR-T only a few years ago. Things are looking up. However, not everybody does super well in CAR-T. One of the prognostic factors that says you're not going to do well is going to be MYC alterations to so that oncogene. Equally, the association with a cold or devoid of other immune cell phenotype and tumor microenvironment is strongly associated with that inferior prognosis. We find those connections in this paper, or poster, I should say. So emerging treatments that we also end up finding after the identification of some of these factors include a combination between the CDK9 inhibitor, AZD4375, and the XPO1 inhibitor, Selenexor. So let's get to it. So Looking at the old ready at all analysis, we obviously see that when you have a MYC alteration or you have MYC high in this case, it doesn't look good. We look over here at the other basic data that we've, ever, we've seen in the past. Obviously, when you take a look at what MYC can do, you are gaining quite a bit of cell cycle capability, but you are big time also losing a ton of immune regulation and recognition capabilities. As you can tell right here, you're losing lots of T cell stuff, any leukocyte, lymphocyte, anything activation. That's not good, right? So moving on back down here, take a look through all of these. When in our in the data set that we're using, Zumo Ne 2020 at all, we can see that in this 418 patient data set, you can highlight and have people that have high or, or DNA altered MYC. I think there's about 51 of them compared for out of the 481. When we take a look at this expression level of just straight up T cell CD8A, CD28, ILR7, CCL2, CD58, and STAT1. See this low in every case when you have these MYC, when this high MYC phenotype in that group. So taking a look here, this is sort of a conglomeration of several of the large CAR-T post hoc analyses showing DNA alterations and did you progress or did you respond to the CAR-T? We see here to this day, MYC is a significant negative prognostic factor and the bigger the studies get, the more that they keep finding that. So if we take a look, oops, we gotta go right over here. Oh no, we wanna go here. So taking a look at the TME, Katlov and colleagues pooled a bunch of RNA together. They found that this depleted, very cold immunophenotype was a key prognostic type, basically, or a key uh, phenotype, basically. We can see in here, for example, some familiar faces, some enrichment right here, some of our old friends, like we're talking about up in the title. These genes facilitate this phenotype, among many others, but they are key factors associated with it. So if we move over here a little bit, we want to do a little dual analysis right here. We take Schaller's data, which was excitingly presented at last year's ASH meeting, and that's right here, non-responder fold change right there. Genes that go down right here. Here, let me get the draw. Genes that go down when you fail CAR-T. And as well, we're taking a look at de novo EFS24, so event-free for size, uh, event -free survival over 24 months, what genes are low in both? What are we seeing in those cases? We see a ton of immune regulatory genes, right? Plenty of really cool targets right here. We're also going to see, all right, who's, uh -oh, who's also being lost in the presence or when CD8 itself is also not available after immune deconvolution. So really fun data. Move over here. What we wanted to see next was, again, taking this uh, taking this phenotype here, we directed and we said, oh, wrong stuff. There we go. We directed and said, we found groups that were CD8 absent after immune deconvolution. So we had that group A versus B, we found associations. Again, we have our previous group right here. If you have high MYC or altered MYC, no, seeing here, again, we see a lot of those immune genes showing up twice, showing up big in that double loss category right there. Moving over here and beginning to incorporate XBO1 association. So if you have high XBO1, one standard deviation or above, we again, using that immune deconvolution stuff, we see a big mega double loss, there we go, of CD8 T cells when you have high MYC or you have high XBO1 right there. 
And you're also going to see those are also lost when you are facing a very dismal EFS 24 failure outlook. Now, taking a quick look here, this one's fun because I said, all right, given that we have high MIC associations and high XBO associations, what happens if we take a look at the patients within each of these smaller groups and say, which of these immune factors are larger in their presence or smaller in their presence in an EFS24 pass versus a failure? So we subdivided these again. What we see is that although the CD8s are still lost in both populations, it's the CD4 signatures in both cases that are really hitting hard when you are losing that battle within 24 months. Taking a look here to the clinical curve, everybody's favorite. When the time comes, if you have high MIC and you are also losing CD8, that is where you are ending up right there. And that that combination perhaps is the quickest ingredient set towards lethality. Okay, taking a look. The Steen Ecotype paper provided us with a tool ecotyper that we could use to, with gene expression data, find patients that would fit in the cell state or the ecotypes. And here we have the cell state. We wanted to use these data to make some quick comparisons between MIC, XPO1, MIC, CD8A, ILR7. What you can see here is a lot of the S1s are dominating the conversation here in red right here. So we're seeing higher MICs, higher XPO1s in those S1s and lower of these immune components. We eventually see that right here as well when we take a look at CD8A and ILR7 or IL7R. So very cool to see. These were super fun to make. I don't know if I can zoom any further, but yeah, super fun. All right, now, now I can, yeah, there we go, we're out. All right, so moving into the drugs in figure four. Come here. Oh no. Catching up, don't worry. So moving into the drugs, we decided, all right, so if mix the problem, can we treat the problem? We looked at AZD and Selenexor. If we actually go back to the intro right here, this is our plan, okay? Mick will promote the protein CDK9, and that is an oncogene, it's a growth gene. We can drug that. We can also drug Selenexor, or use Selenexor to drug XPO1, which shuttles Mick RNA out so that it can become. Kind of coming after this thing on like two fronts can allow us, we were thinking, this should be a great synergistic combination. Here's some good data on the network that we're looking at and that the connections between CD8A B and MIC and XPO1 mostly run through, I don't know if I can zoom anymore, mostly run through MAX, RAN gap one and directly in some cases. And that was made with Gene Mania right there. Super fun tool if you haven't used it. So next we have some cell line RNA data from Hardy 2013. It's a good look at some of the cell lines that they had. But again, cool thing is we got some great synergy coming up here. Everything had to be a bliss score above five, but Five out of our six cell lines do have it. We are going to test that six one one more shot for U2932. The cool thing with ha having such a large, for example, such a large uh, bliss score here with Li3 is that since it's such a monstrosity of a cell, we saw this at first, it actually has some of the worst single treatment ED50 values. So this was really cool to see that mega synergy and be the biggest one out of all these. Equally, we got some great pictures down here, taking a look at the combination, really erased things out of the map, even though in here there's a bunch, tons and tons. But with the combination, looks like we have something on our hands that could be quite helpful. So given everything, we're super excited for the project. We think that it can definitely contribute to the growing conversation of TME and kind of that chicken egg, like who's to blame for the inferior CAR-T. I think we make a small but significant and helpful step forward towards that identification. So definitely stop by the poster on Sunday and we look forward to seeing you.